Hello, everybody. It's Wednesday, August 10th, 2022. Welcome to Big Screens and TV Streams live from the Grand Forks Best Source Studios. Today's show is brought to you by the Southtown Poorhouse, where every day is a great day at the Southtown Poorhouse, especially as the summer winds down, where you can stop in for your favorite drinks and, of course, happy hour with half off apps and taps every day from 4 to 6 p.m. You can't forget about Buck Burgers on Tuesdays and their awesome steak specials on Thursdays at 6. Make sure to check out the Southtown Poorhouse events page to find out when your favorite bands are playing live because band season is coming up again in just under a month when school kicks in again. And every day is a great day at the Southtown Poorhouse. They are located at 2015 Library Circle, just across a parking lot from us and across from the Grand Cities Mall. And they're open Tuesday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. And they're now hiring with great pay, flexible hours, part-time or full-time employee discounts, and free cover on band nights at Southtown Poorhouse of Grand Forks. Well, welcome to today's episode of Big Screens and TV Streams. It's titled Snakes on a Train. You'll see why soon. I'm Dale. Joining me is Victor. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. And uh, K- producer Katie's in the house here, too. She's rocking production. She, Oh, there she is. She's having quite the day today. We'll give her applause for just kicking butt yeah. today. So many things that got wrong. No. Kicking butt, going above and beyond to make sure every show gets locked in today. Our audio thing crashed, so all I've been doing every day is check, 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 check. Yes, it, you, you've you been a technical guru going above and beyond today. And it's, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're going to change some things I know in the future. So yeah, It's just learning lessons for the future, right? Definitely. All right. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, Paul is on some vacay this week. He'll be joining us, uh, pr- not next week, but the week after. So, Paul, we hope you're... Uh, he actually prepped a little something for us uh, for next week's show, which you'll you'll see. make sure to check out next week, and we hope you're having a killer vacation. So today's show, we're just going to jump right into it. It's probably going to be a little bit of a shorter show today, just a heads up. So uh, the big summer blockbuster release last weekend, I think it may be officially the last big summer blockbuster, whatever you want to classify as the last big summer blockbuster, but the new Brad Pitt movie, Bullet Train. Oh, yeah. This is the last summer movie, everybody, so go check it out. Yes, and this is an interesting premise where five assassins are aboard a fast-moving bullet train in Japan, and they find out their missions all have something in common, and needless to say, their paths all cross at some point or another. So what, what did you think of the previews leading up into this one? Because this, this previews, I was a little iffy going into this one. Part of me was like, I don't know if I should want it. This looks a little too... The, the trailers just kind of rocked a lot of catchy music and mm. it seems like just kind of like crowd-pleasing action shots. Part of me was thinking it was just going to be a little too by the numbers going into it. What were you thinking going into this one, Victor? I really liked it. And when I went into this, I literally had a lot of expectations and those expectations were met i knew david lynch was going to deliver like he did on deadpool 2 so i i knew he was going to do it right by this one big name director town david leach well yeah i love deadpool 2 and he was kind of uncredited for his work on helping direct the original john wick yes but he also did hobbs and shaw which is a little bit of a red flag so that's why i was like so this is a 50 50 shot i think that's kind of like a phone job they probably like hey can you direct this for us like sure paycheck one for you one for me kind of thing yeah exactly so i I don't think he was really serious about that (laughs) so yeah brad pitt you know he plays the character he kind of goes by an alias and you don't don't find out his alias until pretty late in the movie as ladybug Mm mm-hmm and uh, so he kind of he's getting a phone call, and I like how this he kind of he's talking to his like his uh, his uh, employer yes. at the at the beginning of the movie. Yep, he makes a bunch of phone calls to her throughout the movie, and we'll get, get have more on her in a bit later. And he's she's setting him up on a, a, a typical by the numbers, quote unquote, uh, snatch and grab job to retrieve this briefcase on a bullet train in Japan. Yes, and the 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 case itself, like everybody wants this case, which is really really interesting. But the fact that him himself, like Ladybug, he's just this. He, He's not like your typical assassin. He's just a goofy kind of guy where he's just like, oh, I'm Wusa. I'm trying to not be the killer. Like, I got to do it, but I'm sorry. You know, I got to kill you. I have to. Yeah, because like even the his employer at the beginning of the movie, she's like, grab the gun from the locker. He's like, I don't like guns. I'm not the killer type. I'm right. just filling in for this other guy, right? <laughs> which is a great cameo. Maybe we'll save the cameo for the beginning because it's, it's like a, like a literally a two second cameo. Oh yeah. And it, it's hilarious cameo. Yeah. Too. <laughs> and there's a, there's a few cameos in here. Too. We'll, 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 we'll touch on some and not on, on some others here, but the other, there's like a bunch of other fellow assassins, like you said, all uh, after this briefcase here. So just kind of running them down. They yes. got the 
Lemon and Tangerine combo. They call them the twins. Yep, they're, the, <laughs> they're brothers. <laughs> yeah, they, and this is very well played by Brian Tyree Henry as Lemon and Andrew Koji as, oh, excuse me, or Aaron Taylor Johnson as Tangerine. Yep. So, yeah, I thought they 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 were both excellent. Their their accents were a little thick at some points for me. There was a yeah. couple points where I was like, wow, this is actually going to be a little too heavy, at least for me anyways. Mm -hmm. And was that, did that kind of catch you a little off guard too? Not really, because I knew that, you know, uh, you know, Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson, he had uh, he had done accents uh, like heavy before, like uh, in Nowhere Boy, uh, who also, fun fact, uh, Nowhere Boy was directed by his wife, um, who also directed Fifty Shades of Grey, which is her first controversial uh, ever film. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. Big, big deep, deep cut there. Well done. Yep. All right. And then we also have, uh, these are smaller roles. Hornet and the Wolf are fellow assassins, played by uh, Bad Bunny as the Wolf and mm. Zaz. Z is it Zazie or Zazie Beats? Zazie Beats, yeah. Zazie Beats. Is, is, is she a fellow uh, mu musician also, like uh, Bad Bunny? Uh, she is not, but she also, another fun fact, th uh, this will be her second collaboration with David Lynch, uh, and hopefully I'm saying his name right, um, on, of course, with her uh, directing uh, directing her in Deadpool. So, yeah. Okay, I, I don't know how you officially pronounce it. At first, I thought you were saying David Lynch. I was like, wait, oh, no. No, it's, like, it's, it, I, I thought I was saying it Leech, but not. But uh, then I would... I'm uh, unsure how to officially pronounce it. Should we say Leech, just so it doesn't sound like Lynch? I don't yeah, know. <laughs> well, cause I, yeah, because Lynch is a little bit different than yeah, Leech. So, yeah. yeah, I would say Leech. So. But, yeah, it was actually yeah, a very, very interesting job here they did. So, yeah, you got these five assassins. They all kind of cross paths, and Brad Pitt pretty much gets in encounters with all of them. Mm -hmm. And you kind of see a nice action shot where he's fighting the wolf there, by, portrayed by a bad bunny behind. And, yeah, just awesome fight, fist fight, and oh, action yes. scenes throughout. Like this one with a bad bunny in the background, like Brad Pitt's using the briefcase to deflect all his... Yeah. Uh, all his uh, his attacks with him with the knife and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, which of the fight scenes would you say are certain fight scene that stood out the most to you? I would have to say, the, I mean, the one with Bad Bunny, that one was, I, I love that one. But I have to say it was the one with, oh, I have to say, yeah, either the Bad Bunny one or, because that one got really personal uh, just because he's like, dude, I don't even know you. And that was the funny part because he's like, try, I'm going to ruin your life like you ruined mine. And I'm like, and he's just looking at him like, dude, I don't even know you. And I think it was so funny. That one or uh, I would have to say the one with, Z yeah, Zazzy Beats and, and him. Because when they, of course, go at it with each other, that one's my favorite. Yeah, both of those were, I'm, I'm with you, those were both great just one-off fights. Those characters are kind of in and out of the movie like pretty quickly. Not yeah. super quickly, but they both have their scene to shine there. But uh, I, I really also like how there's a lot of kind of like delayed background objects that come into play later in the movie. Like there's this, I named the episode Snakes on a Train. Obviously, yeah. the riff on the, the the popular Samuel Jackson Jackson movie, and of course, there's a snake on the on this train yes, in here. Indeed. And uh, I, once I saw the snake coming to play in the movie, I just couldn't help but just crack up. But just uh, the similarity. <laughs> I mean, did that cross your mind too? It did. I, I was actually really surprised because I was like, "Oh, they're doing it like snakes on a you know flame kind of motif." Because I knew that once. Uh, they were talking about it on the news, of course, and then when it came on the train, I was like, oh, I knew they were going to reference that movie. I knew it. Just, oh, where's Matt Samuel Jackson when you need him? <laughs> yeah, there's this awesome foreshadowing at the beginning of the movie where this dangerous snake escaped or was taken or stolen from the zoo, mm -hmm. and uh, you keep seeing it poke poke in every now and again in the movie, and you're like, all right, the snake's going to play in a big role, and maybe it won't spoil how it comes into play, but right. the way they do it is perfect. Oh, of course. And, and same with a certain... Uh, uh, water bottle. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, I'll never think Fiji water the same again after right? this movie. I always find it very funny how, you know, certain objects, I'll always say this, you never know what comes into your life and what's going to come out of it. So, of course, once you follow something that could be like, uh, just a plastic bag, you know, or just a water bottle, you know, mm -hmm. you might never need, you might never know, you oh, might yeah. need it. In I the appreciate the call out to American Beauty. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. <laughs> I was glad. Yes. I was glad on that one. Yeah, we'll give applause. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, same. Yeah, every time I see just a random plastic bag in the road. Right. Yes. Oh and, my gosh. And oddly enough, really quick, uh, I actually, when I actually got out of the movie, there was a plastic bag, I'm not even joking with you, that was right next to me. That actually came up towards me. I'm not even joking about this, ladies and gentlemen. It actually came, and it was, like, standing right there next to me. I'm like, wow. That they would Talk about, like, breaking the fourth wall within a fourth wall. As Ryan Reynolds says, that's, like, 16 more walls. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's a very, very interesting uh, analogy there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, so the movie moves, moves along, and, you know, 
Brad Pitt or Ladybug. He's fighting all these assassins, and you're finding out all this. There's a lot of really good, uh, besides the action, there's a lot of good extended dialogue oh, yeah, uh, and kind of scenes just kind of expanding on the backstory of the characters, why there's someone's, one of the assassins take, has taken a hostage, and mm. find out their backstory. And, of course, various uh, there's some Japanese mobs or gangs involved, too, and you find out about them. But the way it plays out kind of is almost Tarantino-esque, I would say, because they kind of get some involved extended dialogue scenes. Not as intense as mm. Tarantino would be, but I'd say it's maybe just a notch or two under. Yeah, they give it a little bit like like Tarantino. Um, I love the backstories, of course, to all the assassins, and um, of course, the biggest uh, of one of them, of course, the White Death, uh, which is if you guys go see the movie, man, like oh my gosh, Michael Shannon, man, he just really delivers, and he's a very tall actor, so <laughs> he plays that you know Russian you know outsider very very well. <laughs> That was the same one who did uh, Zod, right, in Man of Steel? Yep, yep. he did. Oh, yeah. And he was, like I said, he's a very tall dude, so <laughs> he, he kind of overshadows yeah. Henry Cavill a little bit. So, so yeah, you, once you see how the backstory plays out and then the way the action scenes just develop and just, like, there's some, the fight scenes and the stunts are really, really just well done and the choreography is great. Mm -hmm. And then the film really shows off its budget and towards the end there's some oh, yeah. big action set pieces where, yeah. and, and, yeah right moments like fast oh, yeah. and furious style yeah right yeah. moments like the fight scenes are there's definitely some the movie lets you in early on where hey this movie is completely over the top action don't yeah. expect this to be a realistic movie right but they kind of go all out in the last kind of final act right oh yeah they do and again a call back to of course his direct uh to deadpool 2 uh with the train of course so i i really appreciated the, you know his the, like all the references and movie nods of course and subtle hints like here and there to like different movies as well as you know paying homage to them and not only that but just paying homage to his own movies so i appreciate that yeah yeah the, yeah it's always nice when you see uh the directors do nice little easter eggs and callbacks to the mm -hmm. movies that like uh, uh a couple months ago we were kind of covering a classic movie uh spielberg's the duel on yes. here and uh i was watching the bonus features on the dvd and he Spielberg said in the interviews like how he uses just like nice little sound effects or nods to the duel in most of the most of his other movies going forward so oh, yeah yeah I'm with you it's always nice to see him do nice little shout outs like that but yeah I guess yeah just to wrap it up on the coverage for this this was I I, I just liked how this movie was from beginning to end I thought yeah just the way they explained all the characters a lot of the cast of characters too you know it's obviously not everyone's going to make it out alive so you're kind of like you know it's a nice big cast a lot of our assassins surely there's going to be a few casualties along the way and just okay. keeping you guessing who's out who's really out or are they pulling some twists and the way everything unfolded by the end i just oh, yeah. absolutely loved it and when you find out who uh brad pitt's really talking to mm -hmm. to his employer it's a nice little twist maybe we'll save the spoiler on that but uh oh, and another quick uh quick you know take on that uh this is will be his second collaboration of course and there's actually two actors that he has had a second collaboration with brad pitt has had collaborations with uh on another movie called the lost city if you guys haven't seen that movie so this is his second collaboration. Is that one i need to add to the list yes if you can if you can yes please add that to the list because it's very good if you love romancing in the stone that's another callback to another great movie with Michael Douglas. Okay, I'll have to. I will add the Lost City to the list of movies I need to see here to do a classic review. But yeah, so safe to say, pretty big thumbs up on. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I also love the theme of this movie, like fate. Like you, like I said, you'll never know. I I always say you'll never know who you meet in life. Uh, of course, he's been on a train or whether on the street. So I love the theme of this movie is fate. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm with you. So yeah, on the Rotten Tomatoes on the aggregates there, it looks like. I was surprised. Critics, uh, at least a couple days ago when I checked, they uh, aggregate there. 54% of uh, reviewers uh, gave positive reviews. Hmm. I thought it would be a little higher. Yeah, me too. But, you know, you can't please everybody. Yep. So Audience is a bit higher. 78% of audience members gave it positive uh, reviews. Mm. And... Uh, um, yeah, so yeah, it was doing pretty good there. And uh, but yeah, safe to say both of us thumbs up. Very big thumbs up on this one. Yes. And remember everyone, it's it's funny. You're supposed to laugh at it. You're not supposed to take it seriously. So. Yep. And a, a very quick sidebar. I kind of put a shout out on our uh, the GFBS Facebook this morning. See if uh, no one really got a chance to comment yet, but uh, or at least I want to check right before we recorded, but it's kind of curious about you know other movies people had for favorites that took place on a train and you kind of already referenced deadpool too yep and uh of course uh, mine would always be uh unstoppable uh, yes with Denzel Washington unstoppable and Chris Pine. is amazing yep. very very good movie i saw that movie twice which i loved um and there of course was the uh biggest one uh murder on the oriental express which was based on a great book by agatha christie so. i think that's a, that's 
on my list already. I need to see that one. Very, yep. very. Is good. A se- that's the, the sequel is this year too, right? Or was it yep. last year? No, it actually happened. Oh, actually, not too long ago, actually, and it was really, really quick, and it was a good movie too. And the only other one I got is a Snowpiercer. Yes, that's another great one with Chris. Uh, pr- uh, not Chris Pat. Excuse me. I think it was a lot. Of Evans. Chris Evans. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, and that, that's a whole. Yeah, I've, and they did just they just wrapped up the TV series on that too. I believe earlier this yeah, year. Yeah, it was so crazy because they they had talked a lot about the the series really quick and then of course it just went away like just like that and i was like okay <laughs> so yeah there's a few recommended uh best train films and i saw online also i just started watching it today but only got like 15 minutes in i like what i saw so far but runaway train from the 80s yep have you, remember, have you seen that one yep i remember that one or uh, of course uh, i ran my mother over by the train with billy crystal and uh of course uh danny devito so that was another train movie <laughs> oh yeah nice little rundown of some train films to track down for y'all and uh, we also recommend all of you check out our friends at Everett's Old School Cycle, where Tetch and Harley Davidson owners, this is a place to get your Harley worked on. Everett's Old School Cycle. They're the only PhD certified Harley Davidson technician in the area and your one stop shop for welding and machining, tires, oil changes, adjustments, and tuning and service. Everett's is also a drag specialty and biker's choice dealer, along with Midwest, V Twin Arms Oil Manufacturing, Dino Jet, Jim's Dealer, Tab Exhaust, and Lucas Oil Dealer 2. Everett's can get all the parts you need directly from Harley Davidson. Oh, and by the way, they'll pick your bike up to treat your Harley Davidson motorcycle the way it should be treated by going to Everett's Old School Cycle. You can call them up at 701 772 3232. That's Everett's Old School Cycle of Grand Forks. All right, so we're just going to keep on rolling along here. And I think right now we also just want to give a quick shout out to uh, in, uh, just that we're live. So if people want to comment, if you got your favorite train movie recommendations, or if you've seen Bullet Train, want to tell us what you think. Check, check out and interact with us in the live chat on the GFBS on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, our video stream there, or contribute comments and questions by calling or texting us at 701-213-0863. And also like to give a quick heads up to help support Grand Forks Best Source by checking out the donate link at the top of the gfbestsource.com website or in the about section on our Facebook page. Every donation helps us out with our overhead costs and helps keep the lights on. So please feel free to donate as little or as much as you desire. Another good way to help support GFBS is leaving us a review on your favorite podcast app. So we thank each and every one of you for making us part of your day and for your support. So next up here, I'm just going to do a kind of a quick mini review segment here on two shows I've been keeping up with. I mean, kind of referencing them in my quick takes, at least one of them here. Uh, Orville, they just had their, I thought their season finale was a week before, but it turned out it was just a, a few days ago. Mm. So it's going to get and give some final thoughts on the Orville, uh, just their third season, which they dubbed uh, New Horizons. Uh, so yeah, it, I thought it was a really good uh, season finale. And uh and then also the season premiere of the new Beavis and Butthead season happened oh, too great. on yeah. Paramount Plus. So yeah, I did hear that. Yeah. And, and Orville you can find on Hulu. Mm. So yeah, just gonna give quick thoughts on both here. So Orville, awesome season finale. It was pretty much yeah, they've been going all out with what TV shows are capable of for CG and special effects mm. space wise oh, on uh on uh, on streaming services or on, on broadcast tv absolutely and uh yeah and the episodes were a long almost each episode was like a near movie length like mm. between like i'd say an hour and 10 an hour 20 minutes so almost movie length episodes yeah so i thought that was pretty awesome i know their second season on fox they got the okay to do limited commercial breaks so yeah. like the first season was like your average one hour condensed down to 42 minutes minus commercial breaks second mm. season were like 50 minute episodes mm. this third season like hour 10 to hour 20 minutes so i knew that wouldn't be surprising because I mean, it's Fox, and because Seth MacFarlane has a huge love with Fox, you know, and he's earned them so much money, they're like, yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, earn their trust, earn their freedom to go that. I'm surprised, yeah, they did 10 episodes, which were almost all, like, mini-movies. Well, like, right. yeah, I, knew, I knew they wanted to do a lot of episodic, you know, uh, kind of shows, so, the, of course, Orville was no exception for that one, because they were like, yeah, do whatever you want with this one, because mm-hmm. this was really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it so like the the season season finale for overall it was pretty interesting they're they're building up to uh like a wedding actually mm. so like uh claire the doctor on the show and i uh, isaac you know mm. the the kalon ro- robot android mm-hmm. what have you um yeah they were uh so like mm. they I, isaac proposes right at the beginning of the episode and they kind of so they build up to the wedding they have the first wedding Is yep no no yep that's good yep no that's good i'm covering them both here so that uh, so yeah orville is 
so yeah, they, they, they built up to the wedding throughout the episode, and then they kind of have a side plot where they bring back a character from the second season named Lizelle, where they kind of rescued her from a system that was going crazy with their uh, uh, social society, where it was all based on where like social media took over the popularity, where they upvoted and downvoted people, and got based on news items, and they got downvoted, and then it was pretty much they're done with society. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was it was crazy. She wanted to get off that planet, and uh, I don't yeah. blame her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Orville, they do a lot of interesting allegories on that show. Some of them can be pretty interesting. You know, no, Star Trek kind of did that a lot, too. But I think Orville kind of takes it up to a whole new level. But, yeah, yeah, the, the build-up to it was, of course, they do, like, a bachelor and bachelorette party for both of them. And mm. both of them have pretty interesting results with where <laughs> they go. They go with that from there. And, uh, like, yeah, I just some party shenanigans, anyways. Like, uh, Bordis, like, they're equivalent to... Uh, um, uh, gosh, I'm blanking on the name. The Klingon from uh, Next Generation. Uh Worf, yeah, oh. he, he does a bit for the bachelor party where he's like sings as Elvis. So, oh yeah, I remember Worf. <laughs> yeah, so of course they can, they have some fun with it, and yeah, for the most part, I I really dug the episode and the the wedding scene and all that was really good too. They have some other nice cameos from earlier seasons in there. Very very good uh, return to form for Orville after being off the air for like two or three years because of their unintended extended break. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, if yeah, if you have Hulu, definitely check out the new season of Orville. Or if you haven't already, check out all three seasons. It's well yeah. worth your time. Absolutely. Yeah, you make you, actually you probably be okay skipping like the first half of season one. It was kind of like Next Generation had a rough early start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 if you still, you know, you can watch them all through. But yeah, you don't have to watch it if you you know just skip them all if you want to. <laughs> And so you see the image behind me. Uh, yes, that's uh, Beavis and Butthead. They uh, they returned, yes, uh, and uh, to Paramount Plus. They kind of did the movie first. Beavis and Butthead do the universe, and that was the the show coming back. And uh, yeah, it the, they did brought it back with the movie on Paramount Plus. So now the they had like a two episode drop for their new season on Paramount Plus last yeah. week. And the first episode was kind of interesting. It's where they. Uh, they go to an escape room. They get suckered in by a couple people needing for, to fill out the party for to meet the requirement for amount of people to go into the escape room. And they got to solve to find a way out. Beavis and Butthead, sure. they accidentally uh, go, instead of going into the room, mark the escape room, they go into their, coincidentally across the entrance from that is the bathroom. So they go into the bathroom and they treat the bathroom like an escape room. How do we get out? We're stuck. Uh, yeah, you know, of course, Beavis mistakes pulling the handle for pushing. And how do we get out of here? And yeah, of course... <laughs> Trademark Beavis and Butthead uh, hijinks result, and it's yeah pretty, pr pretty dumb. But you can't I can't help but chuckle at it. I mean I grew up with Beavis and Butthead, so I'm a sucker for their sophomore uh, jokes and all that. But and interestingly enough, they still they still do like a couple of music videos uh, mm -hmm. per episode. But this time to mix up a little bit size of music video, they'll have like one music video and one like it's like a YouTube clip they'll oh, do commentary okay. over. So huh. yeah, for one they're like had like where they're doing commentary over like a uh, ASMR video. So <laughs> oh yeah, I don't, I don't blame them. Those things are weird, dude. <laughs> yes. And then the second episode, you can see it's from the background behind me. Uh, Beavis and Butthead, they, they see how, like, their teacher, Van Driesen, is making profits at the local farmer's market and selling uh, beer, uh, excuse me, bee honey. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, we need to get in on this. So they, they, ca they just grab a random bee's nest, and they're like, put it in a box, and they're like, all right, make honey. And, of course, <laughs> you can see behind me, things didn't go so well. <laughs> and actually, it ended up catching a wasp nest. So, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, of course, yeah, it's more just stereotypical uh, you know, Mike Judge, the creator, uh, you know, he does the voices for her, both doing that style of humor for it. And I thought it was a good return to form. You know, it, probably comedy isn't for everybody. Were you much of a Beavis and Butthead fan over the years, Victor? I was, but I was more into, I was more a Daria kind of person. Oh, yeah, Daria's cause, great, cause too. Because I, I love Daria. But um, I did like Beavis and Butthead a lot just because, you know, uh, whenever Daria got the chance, she would always make fun of them. And plus, I love the episode that um, they had canceled and then they brought back years later uh which was the gun episode where they went into the gun shop and then of course the guy sells them guns and he, they uh beavis sh or butthead excuse me uh no it was beavis but he shot a, a airplane in the air and it fell down and oh my gosh parents groups were all over that episode and uh they had gun control laws after that so imagine what happened then as it's happening now so yes kind yes. of a nod to the like, like i said I, I love that they go back to the 90s as well as the early 2000s and such so it's like how does this go with this you know kind of motif <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah definitely give it a recommendation if you have paramount plus so uh 
Before we get going, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the Mayor's Back the Badge Ride. It's the second annual Mayor's Back the Badge Ride coming up on August 24th from 4.30 to 9 at the Alaris Center in the parking lot outside the Alaris Center. So the Mayor's Back the Badge Ride is back for the second year. Mayor Brandon Bochensky is excited to invite UTV, ATV, motorcyclists, and even golf cart enthusiasts together to enjoy a family-friendly recreation within Grand Forks city limits while supporting the Grand Forks Police, Grand Forks Sheriff, and University Police Departments as part of the festivities this year we are excited to announce zero gravity outreach it is a motorcycle motorbike and quad aerial display so here's your chance to show off your support for these brave men and women who dedicate themselves each day to protecting our community the schedule of events is coming soon and you can find it on their website and you can also register on the website at the mayor's back the badge ride.com that's www.mayor's back the badge ride.com so Check it out, Mayor's second annual Back the Badge Ride taking place August 24th from 4.30 to 9 at the Alaris Center parking lot. All right, so we're going to kind of do some real rapid-fire news points and talking items here. Uh, so I'm just going to just cruise through this first one real quick here. Um, Hulu is moving forward with a TV adaptation of Eric Larson's bestseller, Devil in the White City. I only mention this because they landed the... A-list talent behind it. Keanu Reeves is set to star and also executive produce. So, yeah, it's his largest TV role to date. He's usually a movie guy. And also Sam Shaw is on board as a writer, showrunner, and executive producer. So, yeah, DiCaprio and his uh, Appian Way partner, Jennifer Davison, will also executive produce alongside uh, Martin Scorsese. So a lot of big-name talent behind this. I don't know if you're familiar with this at all, Victor. Um, I had heard Martin Scorsese was doing uh, some a little bit here and there, but I, I didn't I didn't hear anything about this, which was weird, because usually it's always on my uh, my feed, but then, again, I moved, so that's oh, why yeah. I didn't get my news all the time. Been a busy, busy person, too, lately, yeah. Right, but I, but I knew that Martin Scorsese was coming up with yeah. something, and because he works with Leonardo DiCaprio as well as Robert De Niro a lot, uh, but now, because Robert's kind of retired a little bit, he's kind of going with Leo now, so... This is this is really promising. I mean, Keanu Reeves and Leonardo DiCaprio, and man, you got Jennifer Davis. Oh, yeah, well, all the town. Who big big get for them? Right. Oh man, they're pulling out the all no stops on this one. So. Then a quick bonus uh, news item here. All they announced was that uh, a, a Sonic Three movie. I knew it was coming from the teaser at the end. Sonic the Hedgehog Three. And now they already gave the release date. They didn't really release a trailer or anything else for it, but. December 20th, 2024, still like a year and a half out. Oh, I'm so excited for no, that. No, no, excuse me, two and a half years out, holy. Yeah. I know, I'm so excited for that. I knew they were going to come up with something else. And, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, if you guys haven't seen Sonic 2, go see it, because you'll see something at the end that you'll love. So. All right, Victor, we got two news items for you next, and I just heard about this the other day. This is a big one. Big news on the Batgirl movie. Yes, I was very, very heartbroken that they did not get their, their shit together. It's been hard because, like, they spent over $90 million on this movie. And they were so... Because Joss Whedon was supposed to direct it, but because of his mishaps with the, of course, Justice League movie, he was kind of kicked off the project, so... Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of delays, and this was supposed to be, like, an HBO Max streaming exclusive. Yes, and then it was. they Warner pumped some more money in it to be like, no, let's make this a theatrical release, give it some more budget, uh, some, some reshoots, right? Yeah, um, even my friend Ray, he told... Uh, uh, he came into the comic shop and he told us about it and it was weird because they had actually had a cut of the film and they showed it and, and apparently executives didn't like it and they pulled yeah, it Yeah, the out. film actually finished shooting was, and it was from what I under, understood looking into this is it was pretty far along in post-production, right? <laughs> yeah, they showed a little bit of the stuff to, like I said, executives and they didn't like it and the costumes were cheap and it was just not a good look for them and so they're like, yeah, let's just not do this. And it was crazy. Again, it's $90 million. Yeah, $90 million. You and do whatever take a you lot. want. <laughs> I guess from what I heard, I, I that supposedly they're doing this if they do this if they just cancel it now they could just uh, wb discovery merger group can call it a tax write-off and they can recoup some of their losses that way you could but then but why not just put it out you could but then yeah they could have done it like the flash movie even though ezra miller got in huge trouble they still put that out with his face yeah that is still set to come out next year right yeah Yeah, and so that's kind of crazy to me yeah like you why didn't I would say the same thing. Why don't you just release it? But because all that money was put to no use at this point, they were like, yeah, uh, it didn't look good. So we just. Yeah, it sounds like the reason why this happened, at least the speculation from a couple of circles I saw was that the WB Discovery, their new leadership wants DC movies to be big theatrical events, not streaming movies. And so that's probably why they thought it wasn't up to par. That's at least what that's what uh, my read is. I I agree on that one because I know they uh, 
the new uh, president, or not president, but he is, yeah, he's the new president, actually. His name is David, uh, Z- hopefully I'm saying his name right, David Salvo, or Sal- Salve, uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, he, there was a new, of course, CEO, uh, and he, of course, apparently cha- made a lot of changes, and because not only did he make a lot of changes, but he also was like, yeah, there should be more quality, not quantity, so to speak, and that's why everything's changed. So again, sorry if I butchered the last name because it's weird. So. But yeah, so yeah, that's that. And their next oh, news nice. point here is, uh, I believe, yeah, unfortunately, lost uh, someone in Hollywood here. Uh, Olivia Newton-John passed away. Yeah, I wasn't, I just couldn't believe that, man. She was 73 years old and she still looked good, uh, but she had been battling breast cancer for her whole life. So that's kind of, that was kind of a deal breaker right there. But she was great actress, fantastic person. You know, she was very, and plus, Fun fact, if you guys did not know, Hugh Jackman, of course, was uh, hugely in love with her. He even had a poster of her on his wall. So that's what got him into theater. I mean, I I think it's safe to say most of us remember her from her movie roles as uh, Grease, the lead in that. So I know Katie said you just saw that again earlier this year, right? Oh, absolutely. Many times. Yeah, that's a a Stone Cold classic. Great tunes that are still karaoke classics to this day. Still have the soundtrack. One of the greatest soundtracks ever. (laughs) She had a couple big hit songs, too. Uh, her 1974 country single, I Honestly Love You, and then also the big 82 pop hit, yep. Physical. Let's, let's get physical, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, rest in peace, Olivia Newton-John. So, next up here, we're going to quickly run down some uh, theatrical streaming new releases this week. Uh, I know this is a big one. The Sandman just hit Netflix this past week. No, Victor, big comic guy. You excited oh, for this? man, I'm excited, man. I, I'm excited that ne- they're actually going to do what Neil Gaiman actually wanted them to do. They literally didn't pull any punches with it. They said, we love you, Neil Gaiman. Do whatever you want. It's your vision. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, start, yeah, based on the hit Vertigo comic, about 106-year imprisonment, a character known as Dream gets released, seeks to right the wrongs of the Dreaming. So yeah, it's a 10-episode series, all dropped last weekend. Next up is 13 Lives, a streaming movie via Amazon Prime Video. In 2018, several members of a youth soccer team, along with their coach, become trapped in a cave they're exploring when uh, heavy rains flooded the area and blocked the entrance. Harrowing rescue took weeks, involved thousands of experts across the world, and eventually they were able to extract them from the cave. Their story has been brought to life by director Ron Howard, and it stars Colin Farrell, Joel Edgerton, and Viggo Mortensen. Sounds pretty intriguing, actually. Very intriguing. In fact, they actually did release one like this movie, but this was in a different... uh, This was actually a foreign language movie not too long ago. Next up is Luck, a streaming movie via Apple Plus, where... uh, Main character named Sam is a girl who discovers that the lands of good luck and bad luck exist, and there are magical creatures that can help change a person's luck. Some of the creatures include Simon Pegg as a cat, Jane Fonda as a dragon, and John Ratzenberger as a mayor of bad luck. So, yeah, interesting one there. If you have Apple Plus, that's where you can find it. And finally, Prey, streaming movie via Hulu, where it's the next in the Predator line of movies. So, yeah, there you go. Warrior must protect her tribe from a highly evolved alien predator that hunts humans for sport. And this was originally uh, a 20th Century Fox project before the Disney merger, so that's why it's on Hulu. Yep. Uh, it, and as a lot of people were surprised it didn't get a theatrical release from the reviews I saw, but I guess the reason yeah. is because Disney didn't want to share streaming rights with HBO Max because it the deal for this was before the merger, so that's what would have happened, and so that's why I went straight to Hulu and not a theatrical release. So, so, so crazy, so, crazy, crazy Hollywood details. Yes, they are. So, I'm sorry. I love you, Disney, but selfish. And they should have put this out in theaters because it would looked incredible. <laughs> All right, and before we wind things down here, we're going to give a quick shout out to our last fr- last sponsor here at the Greenway Takeover Festival. Greenway Takeover Festival, brought to you by HB Sound. The Greenway Takeover Festival is brought to you by HB Sound and Light and Happy Harry's Bottle Shops, and it's coming back to downtown Grand Fork September 8th through the 11th. You'll hear live music from the Gear Daddies, Mae Simpson, Big Head Todd, and the Monsters, the Yonder Mountain Sitting Band, Cuckoo Kangaroo, Manic Drive, and more. Enjoy food, games, beer, and music. It's free before 6 p.m. and $10 after, so bring the whole family for four days of absolute fun. The Greenway Takeover Festival is September 8th through the 11th and brought to you by HB Sound and Light and Happy Harry's Bottle Shops. Find out more by going to greenwaytakeover.com. That's always a good time. I've been to the Greenway Takeover a few times over the years, and yeah, lots of good music, lots of good times. All right, so we're going to wind things down with our quick takes, uh, what we've watched this past week and what we plan on watching soon. Uh, 
Victor, why don't you start things off? Uh, I know you got one quick take item for us. Yes, uh, I couldn't believe that Nev Campbell uh, doesn't want to do Scream 6, but I can understand why. Uh, she didn't feel like she got paid uh, enough money to do this movie, um, which I completely understand. I don't. A lot of people may lambast me for saying this, of course, because it's like, oh, well, people, get they're rich. They get paid a lot. It's not so much about if they're rich or if they are rich or whatever. It's more about, yeah, y when you're doing a movie franchise, heck, I mean, the guys do as much as the girls do. And I know that's been a huge topic in Hollywood for years. Like, oh, guys get paid more, girls don't. The girls just do as much as the guys do. And honestly, you know, I do agree with her on this. She's been doing this for 25 years, you know, and I agree that she can't go back on that set, you know, with any conscience, you know, like saying, i done this character, I want to do it right. I also want to get paid a lot more because, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do a big movie, Blockbuster, you need to pony up the dough. There should be no excuse. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Any other quick takes from the past week or so? Or oh, um, also again, the quality and quantity of movies. Oh, like I think we got that for for uh, the next show actually. Oh, that's right, yep. we did. Uh, never mind. So we'll save that for when we come to that bridge. So All right, never mind. perfectly. That's perfect. It. <laughs> Sounds good, Katie. Quick takes. Um, Big Brother. I think it's week four, maybe. How's um, this season compared to others so far? It's very things have turned as far as alliances and. There's major certain. drama going on in the house. Oh, yes, extremely, getting certain people out of the house, and it's very exciting. So, Other quick takes <laughs> for the week. I don't know. I mean, started with 16. Now we're down to, like, maybe 10. Ooh. So, like, if you do math. <laughs> is is it like they eliminate one person an episode? <laughs> per week. Okay. So, so oh, yeah. still, like, yeah. eight or nine episodes left then. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Very cool. That's about it, really nothing. That's, the, that's it for the week? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yes. I guess for me, um... I'm a big Ken Burns fan of the documentaries he puts on. I've been very slowly working my way through his uh, documentary on jazz, that series. It's very mm. good so far. I'm like three three discs in. I, I throw a disc in every few months. So, mm. and uh, But yeah, well, he's a master at chronicling the history of music, wars, sports, all that stuff. So yeah, definitely digging his take on jazz. Also working my way through ESPN's uh, docuseries on Derek Jeter called The Captain. I'm uh, through episode four or five they released so far. I think there's still like three or four more episodes they're doing. So I did like what he did with, yeah, uh, of course, with Derek Jeter. He, he, You've been keeping up with it too? I, I actually saw a little bit of it, um, but I didn't get to fully like sit down and watch it. But I watched a little bit of it, and man, it was really good. And it was really funny too because, I mean, I, Spike Lee, of course, executive produced it. So Yeah, yeah they, they dug a lot of people to interview for it too. A lot of teammates. Roger Clemens, I didn't think he be on there daryl strawberry right. don manningly just yeah ton of people and i think right now it's right up through episode four i want to say they're right up through uh right where alex rodriguez just joined them for the first season so it's like uh, a rod and jeter getting along all that dynamic right. so yeah really good stuff and then finally uh watching a lot of pen 15 uh keeping up with that show i got one episode left before i'm all caught up i'll probably do a review of it here in a couple episodes here and then uh the a and e wwe biographies continuing to express i watched the kurt angle one very oh, good okay. the guy has a lot of dark days they go into detail on they don't hold anything back so yeah yeah definitely high recommendation for the a and e wwe biographies really good stuff very yeah. yeah so with that, we will wrap things up. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode of Big Screens and TV Streams. We want to give many thanks again to today's sponsors at the Southtown Poorhouse, Everett's Old School Cycle, the Mayor's Back the Badge Ride, and the Greenway Takeover Festi Festival brought to you by HB Sound. So we welcome you to join us live for all future episodes every Wednesday at 2 on gfbestsource.com and find past episodes by subscribing to Grand Forks Best Source everywhere you find podcasts. And as mentioned earlier, please support Grand Forks Best Source by donating a spare buck or two our way via the gfbestsource.com donate link at the top of the page or leaving us a five-star review on your go-to podcast app. So many thanks to Victor. Thank you always. Many thanks to impervious to evildoers producer Katie. Oh, there we go. There I am. Woo! She has put, been put through the burner today, folks. Oh, you do not know. She has I'm done not, amazing work. <laughs> I'm not done yet. So, still got more to do. We'd be lost without you, Katie. Hey, you are the Ross to this Frasier, so keep it going. Yeah, I don't know that reference. <laughs> okay, it's all good. It's, it's, uh, it's all right. <laughs> it's all good. We'll see you next week where we will have a special edition of Big Screens and TV Streams where we will rank our top three animated movies. That's so many right. choices. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are looking forward to it. We'll see you all next week. Goodbye. Thank you.